Um, it, it's, it's a pretty nuanced level, I think, of understanding, but we're beginning to see on when we look at diets that people eat, that people who consume higher quality proteins or sufficient lower quality proteins, which I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll get to, um, it's, it's really about the leucine that they consume, particularly for their muscle, uh, that, that's important. So I have a question about that, but before we get there, the higher quality, obviously, animal meat is higher in essential amino acids than, yeah. than plant protein. Yeah. And so are, can people that are on a plant protein diet then get sufficient essential amino acids to, to, to foster muscle protein synthesis? Uh, great question. And, uh, you know, this is one area we, we chatted a little bit before uh, I came on to say that um, my understanding and the, even the studies that, we, that I've been involved with uh, ha has changed. And, you know, so 20 years ago when I first came to McMaster, I'm like, it's, the, here's a fundamental truism. Animal-derived proteins are higher quality than plant-derived proteins. Plant-derived proteins have anti-nutritional, fiber is one, uh, phytates, lots of other things that can inhibit protein breakdown enzymes. And, you know, I used to say that's a big deal. It's going to lower the quality. You're not going to get as many amino, essential amino acids. And you know, that's true. Um, but, you know, fast forward 20 years, we've now got processing methods that can lower or change the fiber content. We've got foods where we've isolated plant proteins, et cetera. So we've taken a lot of that out of the equation. And then everybody says, but the essential amino acid content is lower in plant proteins than it is in animal. And I'm like, you're, you know, essentially you're correct. Uh, the top of the list in the plant kingdom would obviously be soy. It's, you know, plant derived protein and probably the, been the mainstay of uh, 20th and 21st century vegans or vegetarians. Um, but now we've, we're looking at uh, a variety of plant-based protein sources that are, they are contrived, they're, they're manufactured foods, but they're very high quality proteins. They're, they're not something that people need to worry about in terms of I'm getting an inferior quote unquote uh, source of protein. So I think that the way you can make up for the difference is you either eat a little more over here in terms of protein, or you go towards supplements or uh, foods that are actually have taken some of the anti-nutritional out, or, and this has been something that we're uh, uh, keenly aware of and trying to study, is that a lot of the prep methods of plant proteins like beans and legumes, you, you cook them. And cooking actually liberates a lot of the proteins and makes them more bioavailable and so reduces the um, anti-nutritional effects. So, Sprouting, cooking, fermentation, all kinds of things that are commonly done with plant-based proteins, beans, legumes, I think are making the two proteins much more close in, in quality inside us than we once thought. And so uh, I, don't, I tend to worry less about protein quality than I once did. And I know that that probably upsets a lot of people because they're like, well, you used to say, and I was like, you're right, I used to say that, but the evidence is evolving. And uh, even in uh, our own hands, we've been, um, I think I've been surprised actually at how good plant proteins have been in, in stimulating muscle protein synthesis. So. That's really good to know. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna ask you this because I know people listening or watching this are gonna ask, and. When you're talking about fiber yeah. and the effect of fiber on, you know, being able to absorb proteins, you're talking about within a plant. You're not like talking about right. eating your plate of spinach with your steak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> inhibiting. Yeah, that's that's right? different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the steak and the spinach still good, good mix. Um, great if you enjoy to eat that way. But no, I'm talking about. I, and I mean, here's the other sort of knock on some of the studies that we use to to make these generalisms. They're fed. People are fed individual foods. And that's really not how we eat. We tend to, you know, you look at a plate and it's got something like this. Um, but when you do that, I, I think the, the, the point I'm making is the fiber that's intrinsic to the plant or the fruit or whatever it is, is, is inhibiting to some small degree uh, your absorption of the protein that's there. But those effects, again, you, you cook uh, a bean or a, a pea and a lot of that goes away. So raw peas and you know, if you eat raw peas, okay. But if you cook the peas, 
they're a lot more digestible. And so, you know, a lot of the studies that we have to look at protein digestibility and the, the amino acid scores, and there are lots of them, but uh, I don't think are as big of a deal uh, as we once thought.